what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel here we are once again with another mcu live stream review for anybody who's just hopping on now over the course of the last week i brought live streams back to the channel and i wanted to start covering a bunch of random films with two different guests in each video and in the case of today's video i'm very happy to be joined by jacob martin it's been quite some time since i've had him here on the channel but very yeah. happy to have him on the channel and, of course, Robbie of The Big Rob Theory, who was recently on my channel as we covered the two Ultimate Avengers films from the early 2000s, animated Avengers films, here on the channel. So you guys can find a review for that. But today, we're touching on Doctor Strange from 2016, the origin film for the characters starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Tilda Swinton, uh, Rachel McAdams, Mads Mikkelsen, Chiwetel Ejiofor, Benedict Wong, and so many others. And, yeah, I mean, first of all, Jacob, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. It's good to be on your channel. Uh, it's been a good while. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, no. And that that would definitely was not intentional, I should say. I was thinking to myself, and I was like, who do I want to have on the channel? I had been going through these big series, these long series with, like, individuals. And I was like, man, it's been way too long since I've had Jacob on the channel. So I knew I needed to hit you up on one of these earlier weeks of doing these live streams. And I was really interested to hear your thoughts on this one. And then Rob and I were talking about various movies in the MCU as he saw me preparing for these streams, watching some of these movies. Uh, Rob, how are you doing? And are you excited to touch on Doctor Strange today? I'm doing good, man. Uh, yeah, I'm actually really excited because uh, after rewatching it, you know, it was just... Uh, amazing to see that like see this movie i've only seen it it's crazy i love this movie but i've only seen it a handful of times i don't know why you know there's just so much stuff but i'm excited to talk dr strange is such a great character from the comics and everything and then just this movie was so well done so yeah i'm excited to talk about this with you guys that's awesome man that's awesome well happy to have both of you guys and yeah so the last couple of weeks we touched on things like ant-man and <laughs> captain america civil war today we continue on with the mcu films i never got to cover here on the channel with Doctor Strange. Now, this is one that going back and revisiting it, man, I got to say, I loved it. I found it to be such a good time going back and watching it, you know, especially with a lot of the, the divisive feelings people are having on MCU projects these days, where it's not necessarily hitting people the same way that they did back in the day. We have this massive oversaturation of tons of movies and shows, and animated things. And, you know, I think for some people, it's maybe lost a little bit of its luster. Um, but I had a good time going back to this one. I think it's for me, Probably one of my favorite origin stories in the MCU. I love the visual style. The director, Scott Derrickson, of course, um, very famous for a lot of horror films, but uh, was able to kind of bring a really cool vibe and style to this while still playing in that fun sandbox that is the MCU. So, Jacob, we'll start with you. How long had it been since you rewatched Doctor Strange, and uh, what did you think about it this time around? All right. Well, I've seen the film several times since this movie's come out i remember seeing it opening weekend and i really enjoyed it and i've seen it several other times this has never been one of my all-time favorite marvel movies but every time i've gone back on it i've always enjoyed it especially like the visual style uh some of the inventive action sequences i think benedict cumberbatch is good in the title role but something about this one this didn't draw me in compared to some of the other marvel movies but for some reason, watching it again for this stream, especially considering some of the recent missteps in recent years that Marvel's done, uh, I'm like, okay, I think I like this movie a little more than I have in the past. I think this is a really good Marvel movie. I would, I still don't think it's a top tier, but I still think it's an enjoyable time. And I think, I think watching it in context of other things, uh, I briefly shared my thoughts on this on Letterboxd, but my favorite episode of What If is the episode with Doctor Strange where he loses uh, Christine and he pretty much loses his heart instead of his hands and he goes mm -hmm. evil. I think that movie kind of helps me appreciate the character even more and the way they told his story, even though it's not the best movie. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Well, I'm glad to hear you enjoyed it more. I, I did kind of, I read your Letterboxd review um, when you when you checked it out the other day. So I had a little bit of an idea of where your head was at this time around, which was nice to see. You know, it's always nice to see when you rewatch a movie and you just like it that little bit more. You know, maybe your heart becomes a little bit more comfortable with it. Or sometimes those sequels come out and they end up kind of putting you in a place where you don't know how you feel. Rob and I were discussing that with the post credit scene of this movie, which we'll get into all of that in terms of like how that really didn't set up the threat that we would really see in the second movie, kind of but how it just doesn't really feel like things are as connected as they once were. But on its own, 
it's a solid film. Uh, Robbie, how about you? We watched the film together, so I know a little bit about how you feel about this movie, but after having seen it a couple of days ago, and you've been sitting on it, how, how do you feel about the original Doctor Strange after all this time? So when I first saw it, I was enamored with it. Like, not not like, oh my God, this is the greatest movie, but it was just the fact, I love magic. So, I mean, I'm, I think a lot of us love magic. So the, the idea of magic. So just seeing that so well done with the CGI and the acting and everything, how it was done, I was impressed with it. But again, similar to Jacob, I, I was kind of like, oh, you know, this is okay. You know, this, this is a good movie. I'm enjoying it, but it's all right. Uh, after everything that came out in the MCU years later, and then especially the Multiverse of Madness and how disappointing that was, I um, definitely grew a lar much larger appreciation for Doctor Strange. And then even after what is season one and two, seeing all of that Doctor Strange growth in the more evil Doctor Strange and everything that happened, I really enjoyed the original Doctor Strange, especially his origin story, because there's a few origin stories that I really like. Thor is one of them. And um, in the MCU, at least, uh, Thor is one of them, and uh, Doctor Strange is another one that I really liked. And yeah, man, I enjoyed it far more this time around. Maybe because my mind was in a different place, or I just have a deeper appreciation for it. I don't know, but yeah, man, it was it was good to go back and watch it. Seeing that after, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the credit scene. I don't want to jump ahead, but yeah, I I've been thinking about that for the past few days, to be honest with you, just how kind of robbed we were, you know, like just kind of robbed from that. Yeah, no, for sure. The, the post credit scene sets up something that we kind of get in the sequel, but not really. And we're specifically re refer referring to the final post credit scene where you see Mordo, who's, you know, a good guy played by Chiwetel Ejiofor alongside Doctor Strange in this one, um, that he's obviously gone bad and wants to destroy all the sorcerers. And while we do see him as a villain of sorts in the sequel, he's kind of like a multiverse version. So he's not even the version that we're following here. So it's not like this story really even continues on into the sequel. Um, but one thing that this movie is definitely universally praised for is its really strong cast with, of course, Benedict Cumberbatch in that lead role. But you also have, like I said, Benedict Wong, Chilatel Ejiofor, and one of the most controversial castings in this whole mix uh, being Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One, as the character originally in the comic books was like an old Asian man. And to be cast as a you know bald white woman wasn't necessarily what was everybody's like most exciting thing but i honestly think she nailed it and when i look at some of my favorite performances in this film i definitely have to lean benedict wong um as as in, in moments of humor uh chiwetel ejiofor i think gives maybe some of the most dramatic performance in the film a little bit over dramatic at times but it works for the movie and i think that the scenes between uh, benedict cumberbatch and tilda swinton are really really solid and i think benedict cumberbatch honestly was the perfect casting or Doctor Strange, in my mind, as a reader of the comics. Uh, Jacob, what about you? What are some of the like like the performances or the actors in this film that stand out for you as like absolute good casting roles? Yeah, there is some really great casting in this whole movie. Uh, you already mentioned Cumberbatch. I think he's excellent as Doctor Strange. I think he does a good job at playing the cockiness of the character and how egocentric he is and how that plays into his growth and the becoming eventually the Sorcerer Supreme. Well, he still has a little bit of that in him, but he has a better purpose than what he had originally. A little similar, a little bit to Tony Stark in a way, but guy has a little bit of the, uh, just, a, just with a little bit of a different touch to it because it's a different character and we're dealing with magic and sorcery and stuff like that. But I think he does the role well. Uh, I do like Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One. I think a little bit of a different departure, but then again, I never read the comics. So I can't compare the two versions of the characters, but I think, I think she did a good job as like the mentor figure with a shade of mystery surrounding her. And there's just this aura around the character that I thought was very fascinating. And she played that very well. Uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor is really good in the role as Mordo. I enjoyed, I think, I think his dynamic I thought was pretty good. Uh, as far as the post credit scene goes, uh, I kind of wish we got a little bit more of that, too, in the following movie. They didn't really explore that in the second film, but hopefully in the third movie we'll see that. I don't know. Uh, I think one of the... Oh, Benedict Wong. I got to bring him up, too. I like I like the Wong character. The more I see him in MCU movies, he's become one of my favorite supporting characters. Uh, just the dynamic of him and Doctor Strange is a blast to watch on screen. It's fun seeing that as early as this movie. Uh, yeah, Matt Nicholson, sure. I'm not 
like he's a good actor, but one of my weak like the weakest aspects about this movie is the villain's not really the best. Like he gives it his all though. Uh and one thing I do gotta respect about this movie, uh there's at least one scene where he and Doctor Strange have this philosophical discussion together about where they stand on certain things. And I'm like if they had fleshed this character out more, I think this Casilius character could have been one of the best MCU villains. But we didn't really get that. Aside from that one scene, he's just a disposable Marvel villain. And I think that kind of hurts some of the stakes this movie, but not as bad as in worse Marvel movies, which have even worse villains. But I think Mads at least gives a semi-good performance to where I can still enjoy the movie for what it is. But the one actor i for always forget who's in this movie is rachel mcadams like every time i watch this movie nothing against rachel mcadams she's a good actress but i always forget she's in this movie and that's probably because her character doesn't really stand out to me in any way and i'm not that crazy about the romance in this movie either so yeah i would i would have to agree on that a little bit you know i i do like rachel mcadams in the movie i kind of like this relationship between because we, we didn't really touch on it, and that's on me. Um, but, the you know, the base premise of this movie, you got this really talented, arrogant, confident doctor who eventually ends up getting in a, a you know, car crash, ends up damaging his hands, and he seeks some, 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 some sort of way to kind of stabilize his hands again, stabilize his health. This, of course, leads to him finding uh, these sorcerers who help him heal his mind, his body, his spirit, and becomes the Sorcerer Supreme over the course of time. But amidst all this, there's this woman that he obviously loves, it's, uh, Christine, played by Rachel McAdams, and it's a, it's a broken relationship. He's too arrogant to see what she really is for him. And he kind of pushes her away at a certain point in the film. And then she shows up later on. And I do agree. I feel like they didn't do enough with that. And I do agree that they didn't do enough with Kaecilius as well, played by Mads Mikkelsen. I was telling Rob while we were watching it, but I just love Mads Mikkelsen. And I specifically said that in that scene that you're referring to, Jacob, because I do think that he gives a great performance. Um, but I do agree that on paper that the character isn't giving much other than I'm bad and I want to bring him up, bring upon this evil because it's the thing that you know speaks to me now or, or it's going to give me eternal life or some sort of you know mumbo jumbo that villains would typically kind of spew in a movie so I do, I do agree with what you're what you're saying there as far as uh Caecilius and the villain element in general I, I do think is my least favorite part of the movie and we'll definitely get into that in a moment but Rob what about you man what uh what, what performances here in the movie stand out to you are there any actors that you just like say like that was just perfect casting when you watch this movie <clears throat> I mean, I think we're all uh, pretty much uh, on a similar, similar plane when it comes to that, because we all agree that Benedict Cumberbatch was the prime choice for Doctor Strange. You know, there's certain characters that you see, uh, sorry, I apologize, uh, certain actors and actresses that you see, like Scarlett Johansson, that is Black Widow, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr., that is Iron Man or Tony Stark, I have more Tony Stark than Iron Man, and Benedict Cumberbatch is definitely Doctor Stephen Strange, you know. Like that was just one of the prime castings and the ancient one too like she did a great job like i i understand that there was um i never really got into the the drama back then or if there even was about the fact that it was gender swapped which it probably was because nowadays we, you guys know there's a problem with everything but um yeah no i i never i never even heard anything about that because she did such a good job in my eyes and i mean in the theater that i was in people loved it you know so I, I love that casting as well. And she would tell Edgio 4 is a great actor, but there's one scene, once you, once you said something about him being too dramatic, there was one scene that popped up when they're in the mirror dimension. And, uh, and he's like, this isn't clever, this is suicide. And it's just like the way he said it, it was like, bro, <laughs> you, didn't need, you didn't need to add that much oomph in your voice for that. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, he, he, he was a good actor though. And, um, yeah, Rachel McAdams, man. Like, I, it's not that I forget she's in the movie, but it's just, it's not. She doesn't have much to do besides the, you know, the like the, the nurse, not a nurse assistant, but like the, the operating assistant or whatever she is, the nurse's aide. Like, she doesn't really have much to do, you know. So she's a phenomenal actress. I love her, uh, but yeah, no, that she's not my least favorite part of it. But it's just, it's just not a. Uh, not prominent, you know, like when you think of everything, you don't think of her first. And I love Kaiselius too, but Dor Dor Dormammu, man, we're talking about villains, like, I'll let you get into that, but I just, that was one of my biggest disappointments, was just the way, like, I, I like the concept of when Strange came in and did what he did, but it's just, they did Dormammu wrong and dirty, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know, that's just my opinion on that idea. 
I think that they could have definitely done him more justice. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that we all agree that the villain element of this film is the weakest. And while I don't necessarily hate it and I understand what they were trying to do, I, I think there's no getting around that. And as far as the Tilda Swinton thing, yeah, I think that that's one of those few times where like a not only a gender swap, but a whitewash because, you know, they, they actually funny enough, though, I do like that the movie does kind of try to give you we knew that she was going to be the ancient one if you kept up with any of the castings. But in that scene where he first arrives to uh, Kamertaj, he walks into that room and he sees the older gentleman there with the beard uh, and he thinks that he's the ancient one. Well, that's what the ancient one looked more like in the comic book. So that's obviously a, a joke and nod that that's who he thought was the ancient one. And then it turns out to be Tilda Swinton. And I, but I think at the end of the day, it comes down to if a perform but like a casting or like a, an actor, actress is able to give a performance that sells who that character is and who embodies who that character is. And I think Tilda Swinton stepped up to play, you know, the, you can say whitewash, you can say gender swap, but uh, I genuinely think that she really played the role super well. And uh, I enjoyed seeing her. I believe she returns again in infinity war and they go back in time. Infinity War Endgame. I'm, I'm Endgame. struggling to remember. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, Endgame. Endgame. Okay. Right, that's that's what I thought. As soon as I said it, I go wait. I think it might be Endgame. But um, either way, she comes into that final Avengers storyline, and uh, you know she was great there too. Even though it, her performance there is fairly brief. Now I definitely want to start leading into some of those negatives and stuff like that. But first, before we do all of that, I want to touch on maybe a favorite scene that everybody has. Um, for me personally, I really just love that first scene that the Ancient One just touches his mind and sends him on that trip. I just love the visual style of all that. It's crazy, it's wild, and I think it just gives you the perfect taste of the absurdity that the film is going to kind of lean into. Uh, Jacob, we'll, we'll start with you, man. What, what, um, What's your favorite scene or maybe uh, some favorite moments in the movie? Well, that is definitely one of the best scenes in the movie. I do agree. I, just, I remember when I first saw that movie in the theaters, I told myself, Okay, I'm not on drugs, and I never will take drugs, but seeing this movie and that scene is probably the closest thing I'll have to taking a drug trip, because that was wild. <laughs> but yeah, that was a crazy sequence visually. My other favorite in this movie is actually uh, the third act where he uses the time stone, and there's a school scene where time is reversed. And they're still having this action scene going on while everything else is going backwards. I'm like, this is some really cool stuff visually. And it just watching this movie again just reminds me, you know, people crap on the newer Marvel movies. They're like, oh, the visuals in these newer Marvel films suck. Why does She-Hulk look the way that she does? And why does MODOK look the way that he does? But then you watch this movie, it's like, man, they took their time in these visuals and it looks amazing. I saw this movie was Oscar nominated for visual effects and it shows because this movie looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I highly agree. Yeah. Rob and I were saying that when we were watching it together. It's like there's certain sequences, just in action, the opening sequence, um, the, the sequence later on where, you know, of course the, the ancient one ends up dying and at the end of that fight, but when they're running from Cassilius and they're all just shifting the world around them, like all of that was just so cool visually i just thought it was just so cool and I, I do agree that 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 final sequence there where everything's kind of reversing and they're still battling and they kind of are you know uh unlocking each other through time to be able to also fight it's like to be able to do all those visual effects and have that world around you still shifting it, it's just so cool that the, the, the visual style and i think if they didn't have the vision of that if they didn't have a vision of how to pull off all this magic and kind of world shifting i don't think it would have worked as well but what about you rob uh, what stands out to you as maybe like favorite scene in the movie maybe a couple of favorite scenes um i've got quite a few to be honest but i'll you know dial it down uh the, the the opening one with the ancient one tossing him into a whirlwind of trippiness that's always going to be a great one you know like it's just it, it shows just truly what the ancient one can do and what the world that he's stepping into is going to be about you know so it's it, that is just such a great introduction into the magical world and what we expect um, uh, what, one of the most important, in my opinion, one of the most important scenes to me and my, one of my favorites is what I was talking about uh, earlier with uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor and um, Benedict Cumberbatch in the mirror, uh, the mirror dimension when uh, Kaecilius comes and attacks the Sanctum and uh, they go into the mirror dimension and, uh, you know, the Ancient One shows up and shows, you know, what's good. Like, she shows what's good and then she gets hurt, whatever, and uh, first of all, that mirror dimension scene is beautiful the visual effects in that are through the roof like i really would we were watching it together and i'm just like wow this is 
this is a lot better than I remember. This is a lot more well done than I remember. So I, I got to give them that. But what I really took away from the end to where she died is she's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I always come to this moment and it's like one moment stretched into a thousand. And then, you know, she says to Dr. Strange, she's like, oh, something. And then she says, it's not about you. You know, like what she said when she said that, it, it gave me goosebumps when we were watching it together because it's like that goes into play with everything. You know, and us as humans, we think that it's always just about us. You know, when it's not, yeah, yeah, things can be about us, but it's not only about you, you know, and certain things aren't about you at all. And I love that for his character because you see on his face and he's just like, even with the music, the music's swelling in and his face, it's just like, damn, she's right. It's not about me. It's never really about me. It's about helping other people. It's about doing this. It's about doing that. Even when he took the Hippocratic Oath, it was about helping other people. So I, I love that scene with her. That's like her final scene. Obviously she dies and it's just like one of the last things she says to him is that and it's like, oh man, such a beautiful, beautiful way to like end her in the movie and the cinematography and everything about it was just beautiful. So I, that's, I gotta say that that is like my top, my top scene or scenes. Yeah, no, I would agree. That's a great scene. And I think that, uh, yeah, I like that shift that he kind of realizes in his mind that like, sure, his hands may not allow him to do surgery anymore, but it doesn't mean that he can't still save people, you know, which is what it should be all about. But of course, at a certain point, it became more about his reputation and different things like that. And he kind of had to learn to kind of kill that part of himself off. Um, so yeah, man, really, really good choices by both of you guys. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on that. We're going to lean into the negative in a second now, but I um, just wanted to see some of the comments that we have here. You got Blacktastic Media saying, good morning, fellas. Hey. Henry Mockingbird popping in to say, hello, guys. I'm not an MCU guy, but I do know there's a Doctor Strange movie from the 70s. I did forget about that, but I do know that that is a movie. I haven't seen the pictures of it, but I've actually never seen it. Have you either of you ever seen the 1970s Doctor Strange? I, I saw a video related to that movie one time, and it looks so bad. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I that That's from what I remember. It looks pretty terrible. Um some of those earlier just like random offshoot Marvel movies that kind of hardly even got a release were um, really atrocious. Like that Fantastic Four one from the 90s that, that where the thing's face never moves and he's just like oh my God. the whole movie. It's 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 pretty bad. Um, Mike popped in here to say three legends in the game right now. What's going on, man? Thank you so much for stopping by. He also said that I've always enjoyed this movie, but the sequel isn't as good personally, which I think we all agree on. While I still enjoyed the sequel in a lot of ways, there was a lot of great fan service in it. There's no getting around away from the fact that, especially now, seeing how everything has just not really come together, I think Multiverse of Madness really opened our eyes in terms of hype to the prospects of what could be, and we didn't really get that. He also I actually, said, like, no, I actually do more. enjoy the sequel personally. Uh, nice, I think yeah. a lot of it is due to Sam Raimi's flair that he brings to that movie. Yeah, There's a right. couple things in it that could have been better, like they could have fleshed out the multiverse thing a little bit better, but I, as a Sam Raimi film, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, I do still like the movie. I, I rated it well. I gave it like a positive review when I first saw it. There's so many great moments of like fun fan service and just like cool action. You got that fun Sam Raimi vibe, like you mentioned. Um, the overall, like the look, the feel, the score of the film. Love all the stuff with Scarlet Witch in that movie. I love the parallels also to like um, Spider-Man 2 specifically in that movie with uh, with Scarlet Witch at the end. You know, she kind of pulls a Dr. Octopus and kind of like, you know, takes herself out, so to speak, even though I'm pretty sure she's totally fine. She's going to return yeah. later on. Um, but uh, yeah, Mike also said, let's not talk about MODOK. Uh, <laughs> Henry Mockingbird said, let's talk. Let's not talk about She-Hulk. The scene of her twerking is cringe as heck. I would have to the, agree. That was the worst scene of the whole show. Yeah, it's a, that, that show, man, the, the longer it sat with me over time, that one, because, you know, She-Hulk in the comic books, broke the fourth wall and did different things like that. But it just feels like she just, they, they just went too far with certain things in yeah. that movie and the twerking. And even at the end when she, you know, jumps out of the TV screen into Disney plus, like, I was like, all right, dude, like, like, all right, yeah. what, how are you going to include this character in like Avengers movies later on without it feeling weird? And, you know, we were, and we got Deadpool coming on the way. Maybe we'll get a Deadpool and She-Hulk adventure. Now, at that point, we get a Deadpool and She-Hulk adventure, and Deadpool and She-Hulk are twerking. I don't know if I'll be too mad at that. It might make me laugh, but it'll still be kind of stupid. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds will make it make it good, so yeah. Right. Um, Henry Mockingbird also said that the 90s Fantastic Four is the best Fantastic Four movie. Ooh, I can't say I agree, personally. 
Uh, I still, while it gets a lot of hate, I honestly love that first one from the 2000s with, uh, with Chris Evans and Jessica Alba and stuff like that. While it's not a great movie in some ways, that movie, I think, captures the goofy spirit of what the Fantastic Four were. And I had somebody who grew up with the 90s TV show. I really uh, enjoy that. What, what's your guys' favorite Fantastic Four movie? Well, I, I don't, I've not seen the 90s one, but I've seen the other ones. I'm not the biggest fan of any of them, even though I grew up with the 2000s ones. I just don't think they've held up the best. Right. Uh, I think I'll, pro- I'll probably just bite the bullet and go with the crowd and say, the best. Uh, the best Fantastic Four was animated, and it's called The Incredibles. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hey, man, I respect that answer. I respect that. That's 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 legit. What about you, Rob? I mean, listen, that '90s one is just so bad. Um, it's uh, uh, honestly, bro. I really do love. Okay, so hear me out when I say this: the 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 original, well, not the original. The original was the '90s one, but. but the one from the 2000s and the rise of the silver surfer those were not great but there's a part of me that um has a love for those movies because of the time frame that those movies came out like the movies from that era i don't know what it is there's just this this feel about those movies that makes me love a lot of the movies from them even if they weren't great i still love them and i will like rep those movies and i will fight for those movies you know but granted they, they, they weren't perfect okay <laughs> they were not perfect but I, I, I did enjoy them. Like my, I think my, the first one is just re, like just amazing because it just introduced all of them. And I love the Silver Surfer, so I do like that one too. But yeah, the first one, the original one, just yeah. I think it's, I think it's just like it captures the the cheesy spirit of the Fantastic Four. But man, I, I do love Jacob's answer though. I can't lie because The Incredibles is the best Fantastic Four <laughs> film that we've ever received. Like there's there's no getting around that. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah. I, like as soon as he said it, I'm like, damn. He he he, uh, he took the cake with that one. You guys um, like four stick? R- no, no. Fan four stick can can go to hell. Um, <laughs> That's a terrible movie. <laughs> yeah, so, so bad. The thing um, looks like a naked walking chocolate bar in that movie. <laughs> it's, oh my god, dude. <laughs> pretty much, man. Just everything about that movie narratively. Because I remember I showed it to Rob for the first time. I don't know, like in the last year and a half or something. I wish you didn't. And Rob was like, at first, Rob was like, you know, I've heard this movie's bad. I know you told me you don't really like it. Like, I'm, it can't be that bad. Like, it seems pretty good so far. I remember in the first 15 minutes, you were like, all right, this seems promising. And then at a certain point, we got to the end, and Rob was like, what's really even happened in this movie? Like, literally nothing has happened. Like, we got to the end, and we've sat around in a base 97% of the movie. Yeah, it's just, just, um, yeah, it's just, it's just it was a, it was a weird choice for sure. I see prodigious Spider Man also said afternoon gent. He also said I hope we get more edgy of four as Mordo, which I think we all agree. And the true the Fantastic Four, the Incredibles. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Mike also wanted to get our thoughts on Rachel McAdams' character Christine, uh, specifically in the second one, um, since they really didn't do much with her. And similar to Mordo, and I think this is my biggest issue with the sequel is that any threads from the first movie are kind of thrown straight to the trash because we're in a multiverse world the whole time. And uh, there's really no continuation to the direct storyline other than the fact that Christine from our universe is getting married at the top of the sequel. But that's, you know, quickly breezed over. Uh, Jacob, what, what are your thoughts on what they did with Rachel McAdams' character based on the setup of this movie? I'll tell you what's interesting. I don't remember her in the first movie, yet I do remember her in the second movie. I think the stuff <laughs> that they... They said that they do with her in the second movie just stood out to me more. The fact that, you know, she, she's, she fell in love with somebody else and is getting married because she thought Stephen Strange was dead because he was the one of the ones that got blipped. I thought that was a, I thought that was a powerful scene to show, you know, the consequences of what happened during that infinity war timeline and how people's lives were messed up. People were, trying to move on and then they come back and that leads to some big consequences. And I thought that was, I think we're going to, we've had quite a few scenes post end game that reflect upon that. And yep. I think that was a, another moment that I'm like, okay, we get to see more of, you know, I think the everyday people and what they had to go through during that rough window of time when the snap happened. Uh, and I think the multiverse version of Christine, I just felt like, was more interesting than the regular Christine when 
Strange was teaming up with her uh, in that other timeline. Uh, I think she, I, it's, I, don't, I haven't seen the film since it came out in theaters, but I remember she made some points about his character and his ego that really helped him grow in that second movie. And I think, I think if I had to say there was an improved character in the sequel, it would have to be Christine, but that might be a hot take. Well, I, I kind of like the the approach you had on it in terms in terms of how it kind of affects him and also how the events of Endgame kind of like affected their relationship. I, I think that it, that's a good point for sure. And I think for me, I just feel like um, they just never like because our timeline is completely kind of like not focused on in that sequel. You know, while we do spend a lot of time with this new Christine, and I, I do love that scene at the end where he's, you know, he just battled Evil Strange, and he's, you know, I love you in every universe. I thought, I thought all that's great, you know, um, but it does beg the question of eventually he'll get his chance with some version of Christine, you know, or at least the one that we follow in this first movie. Because then to just jump to the sequel, it is a shame that they just kind of like are just buddies now, you know. And um, based on rewatching this film, you, you do kind of feel this sense of like wanting to see them get together at some point. Um, yeah. So what, what about you, Rob? What do you think about Rachel McAdams and how they kind of handle her character with the multiverse version and all that in the sequel? Well, I will say that um, I'll agree with Jacob that they did uh, give uh, the Ra Rachel McAdams or this Christine in the sequel a little bit more to do or at least more interesting stuff to do. You know, she was working with the heroes of that universe, which I still cannot believe and will not believe that they took out Thanos because what but anyway um yeah they, she she was more interesting to me in the second movie because it's just she was more involved heavily with um the events that were going on with the superpower beings and she kind of had a more uh what's the word I'm looking for more uh, I guess just not rude mentality but just straightforward there he goes more a more straightforward mentality like she was talking to strange and she's just like yep uh -huh. Well, you know, like I, I like that she was just kind of cutthroat with him. Again, like how Jacob said, like it helped him develop his character a little more. And I, again, I just wish that they did even more. You know, okay, that's a different version of Christine. So what about our Christine? You know, like what about the universe that we have? Like there, there's nothing that was touched on. We even got again the Baron Mordo of that universe. So it's like okay, you have Christine and Baron Mordo of this universe. But what about the one from our universe? You know, like what about? that end credit scene. You know, what about Baron Mordo taking out the sorcerers? He just got took out this man's back pretty much. Okay. <laughs> like, and he's just still on the on the ground there. So like what what's going on? Like what, that, I just wish that they would have touched on what we really wanted to see in in the in that movie. But at the same time, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that movie. You know, so I guess I could say if I liked any version of Christine more, it would probably be the one that they use in Multiverse of Madness. But again, I wish we still got more payoff from our universe. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think you both make some really good points. And uh, yeah, I think there was definitely some elements about uh, about it in general that they, they could have done a, a, a little bit better. But I, I do agree that they kind of gave her some sort of a little bit something more to do or at least something that kind of leaned into the character arc for Doctor Strange in that sequel. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've touched on the good. We've touched on our favorite things. We've uh, touched on all the, the 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 fun, cool parts of this movie, but there's definitely some things that I don't like, and I think we all mentioned uh, the villains of this film. And if I had to lean into anything that was my biggest negative, it, it's Dormammu. Um, he's the threat that's kind of looming over this movie that's mentioned. And for anybody who's familiar with the comics, Dormammu looks nothing like the Dormammu that we got at the end. Now I'm okay with the character redesign for a live action, but we mentioned the Fantastic Four movies earlier. Um, and I'm of the opinion that they kind of did what they did with Galactus, where like you know in the comics he's this big like Titan guy in the sky, and in the sequel to that right that in Rise of the Silver Surfer, Surfer, they um they make him like a big cloud, and it was like what like it just felt like so detached from the comics, and similar with Dormammu, Dormammu is like has some size to him, but he's not this big face floating around. In, in in cosmic space like he's actually like an entity with like a body and stuff like that in so many iterations of the comics if you look him up you'd be like this is the guy that they put in Doctor Strange it just was such a strange choice to me um on top of that too he really as big of a threat as he is in the comic book they kind of just made him like a quick throwaway villain kind of similar to Galactus you know here you have this literally world eater that's like this ginormous threat 
and he shows up and gets taken out so so quick and he's just a big cloud um so um rob i'll start with you this time uh what, what are your thoughts on on dormammu and uh and how he was shown in this movie i i was not a fan uh it just it just didn't really make any sense because we we're talking about the dark dimension and you know this this impending doom and and the sanctums protect you know the mystical world from Dormammu and everything and it's like, oh, okay well let's go let's see him and then we get a big floating face in the sky that looks like sand moving you know it's like what, what? I I just I it didn't it didn't really make me feel like oh, okay I was like okay well Strange is gonna find a way even the first time I watched it I was like okay well Strange is gonna find a way to get out of this because it just it, it didn't seem like it was going to be any big thing. Like it, it came up close to the end, which is what they do with villains, whatever. But th- you could tell that it was just going to be like a quick one and done. And then he's, he's defeated. So it's like, okay, well, what are we supposed to do here with this man? Like, this is such a iconic villain, same thing with Galactus. And he got taken out easier than like a piece of rice. Like, I don't understand it. It, it was, that's definitely one of the weakest parts of the movie to me. Is just especially that because that scene is a is a good scene. Like it looks good, and I love what Strange did with Dormammu. That's a great thing to do with a villain, but I don't know. It just it, it kind of took me out. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree. Do you do you feel like Dormammu should have been in more of the movie throughout it as like a threat that we saw coming, or maybe see him do more threatful things, or do you think it was better to keep him at the end? I like I like I like the mystery sometimes, but with this, I would prefer if maybe it, it, we, we only needed two more times to see him. He didn't even need to do anything. He just maybe Caecilius saying something, and then Dormammu is like giving him an order, or um, him saying like, "Oh, the sanctums will fall," or some something, literally anything, and then see him come in again. Then it would be a little bit more impactful. It'd be like, oh, "Okay, well, this is the big showdown, so what's good?" Now, if there was gonna be there was a big showdown with Caecilius and him already anyway, I guess. But yeah, if we would have just seen Dormammu maybe even one more time, you know, before that, maybe a little snippet of him talking to you know, followers or saying something in the ether. I don't know. It, I, I would have I would have liked to see maybe like one or two more times of him before we saw the finale. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. What What about you, Jacob? What What are your thoughts on Dormammu? Well, I had the look up real quick what Dormammu looks like in comic form. I'm the outsider compared to you guys and just looking at the designs of Dormammu he's got this cool suit and it's like fire coming out of his head and his hands I'm like that would have been awesome to see in a movie I, 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 can, kind of, I can see where you guys are coming from uh this guy in the movie kind of sucks in comparison uh, but yeah Dormammu himself like just looking at the context of the movie I think they're trying to tease him or set him up as like a greater threat, but he's only in like one scene and you don't really know the full power of what he can do. So so it's like, why should I care about this guy when you don't really do anything with him? It's all talk, no show. And I can definitely see the comparison with the Galactus and the silver surfer movie. Cause when I rewatched that again, all these years later, I'm like, Okay, I cannot take a big ominous storm cloud seriously. That's not an evil threat. So, uh, well, I will, I will say, um, I do, I do like the big scene with Dormammu. The Dormammu, I've come to bargain, and that whole time loop. That one, that's a cool scene visually. I do like some of the humor with that. The multiple ways, like he dies and then he comes back just to toy with him. I thought that was pretty good. So. I think if maybe if they had done a little more with the character, maybe set him up a little bit better, see more of what he can do as a villain. I think as far as stakes wise, this would be much higher in my Marvel ranking, but as is, it's like, yeah, the villain aspect's not the best. Yep. All right. No, I definitely agree. And like you said, you looked at the designs. It's like, he's such a different character. He almost has like a ghost writer kind of look to him in yeah. a way. To some, to some he does degree. almost. Yeah. Right. And you could have done something so cool with that character. So when I saw the movie for the first time and I was hearing Dormammu was coming, I was like, dude, no fucking way they're bringing Dormammu into this. And then it turned out to be a big face. I was like, what is this? Uh, But similar to both of you guys, I think that that final sequence with him is pretty fun. I think that it's like a cool, clever way to kind of defeat him and kind of get him to go away. And um, 
you know, th- he's still kind of like a looming threat. He wasn't destroyed. So there's still always the prospect of bringing him back. Um, but I guess I guess we'd have to see. I guess, uh, Jacob, I'll throw it back to you quickly. If you could see Dormammu return, return as a full-fledged, the main villain of a movie um, for some future storyline, well, maybe what character would you like the team go up against? Or would you want it to be in something like Doctor Strange 3? Uh, well, if he if he's mainly connected to Doctor Strange, it would make sense for him to be in Doctor Strange three. I and mean, maybe we could see him in the full form of like the fire coming out. And especially, I'd, I'd love to see you know Sam Raimi come back and direct another Doctor Strange movie after Multiverse of Madness. And having Doctor Strange and Dormammu have like this one on one fight where you get to see like the cool visual stuff in the background and Sam Raimi doing what he does best. Can you imagine how awesome that would be? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty awesome. I think they could do so many cool things, especially with Sam Raimi in the director's chair. I know that Sam Raimi is, if I'm not mistaken, has kind of mentioned interest and in even wanting to do maybe one of the Avengers movies like that's coming up, um, which would be amazing to see, honestly, because Sam Raimi is yeah, just that would a, be cool too. Well, Sam he's such Raimi, a good director. Well, well, Sam Raimi, you can associate him with two genres. He's good with horror movies, and he's good with comic book movies. If he directs a horror movie or a comic book movie, I'll be happy. You're yeah. not wrong. You're not wrong, dude. Any anytime Sam Raimi touches any of those, either one of those two genres, it's 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 usually at least a fun time or top tier. Honestly, to be honest, uh, what about you, Rob? Uh, anywhere you would like to see Dormammu pop up again in the future? Um, I, one, I would definitely love to see another showdown, like kind of like a rematch between Doctor Strange and Dormammu, but Dormammu done the right way, you know, like him done the right way and then have that showdown, especially because Doctor Strange wouldn't really, maybe he would know, but it kind of make it to where it's like, okay, Dormammu was this big entity. Now you have, I mean, this guy who's another, a big entity, yes, but he looks completely different, you know, so it's like, who is this new threat? And then he's like, you know, Dormammu could kind of toy with him and be like ah so you don't remember me or something weak or so i don't know just something make it just so like i don't know man that would be cool to see another like a, a rematch between those two but i would also like to see dormammu go up against i don't know let's see um i don't want to say the event right now <laughs> but uh yeah maybe maybe that'd be pretty cool to see that just make him a main villain like a little main villain of like a whole um the whole arc or something i don't know that would be pretty cool that's the thing right is that dormammu in the comics has been a big villain to a lot of the characters and like has the ability to do so but in this movie they, they don't ever give him that sense of threat you know it kind of be like if they threw thanos into one of these movies like before the like instead of doing him as the main villain of <laughs> infinity saga and they just kind of threw him in as like a one-off villain that gets destroyed at the end of a movie you'd be like oh, oh okay man. oh that would yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That like just, that's one of those weird things. I can just imagine it. I'm oh, sorry. I can just imagine it. No, no. Go ahead. Go Doctor ahead. Strange sees this Dormammu in the other form, and he'll and he'll be like, "Who are you? I I've not fought you." He's like, "I've come to bargain." And I'll be like, "Oh <laughs> crap!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so crazy. Like, oh shit! Like, oh my god. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. That that would be the way to do it right there. The way the the, the kind of call back to that line that that would be top top tier. Now, outside of the villains, of course, we've had our our thoughts on that in terms of it being our negatives. Um, outside of that, what what, what would you guys say is maybe your least favorite part of the film outside of the villains? Uh, Rob, I'll start with you this time. What what's your least favorite part? Maybe a least favorite character, a scene that you feel doesn't necessarily need to be in the movie. Um, I mean. On, wow, that's kind of tough because, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of a lot of the scenes in this movie do great setup for the other parts of the movie, or you know, like our nice callbacks to other parts of the movie. So I don't know if I can say that there we could do without a scene. I guess maybe if I had to choose, had to, it would be the scene where uh, Strange gets stabbed with that like magic sword and. Um, He's in the hospital with Christine, and he's fighting that guy, the that random follower the, of of the um, the dark dimension. Um, I guess maybe we could we could do without that. Just have her trying to save him, and maybe some magical stuff happens, and she's just like, "Oh, what the hell?" You know, I don't know. But um, yeah, I know maybe we could do without that. But honestly, a lot of the scenes in there worked, bro. They really did work. Everything kind of played on each other, and it was nice setup. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't really think of. I can't really think of any scene that I would personally take out. Uh, we already said what our like least favorite scenes were, right? We already said what our least favorite scenes were. No, that that's what this is right here. Oh, okay, okay. Well, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I, that's. Right. I wouldn't say favorite, but yeah, I think that would be probably my one of my least favorite scenes. Another one is actually closer to the beginning when uh, Doctor Strange is kind of a excuse my language, but a twat. He's just such a like a, just an a hole, like uh, and especially like to Christine. So it's like, okay, well, yeah, my least favorite parts is seeing him as he was. Uh, and after that, you know, it just, I don't know, maybe the movie just flows to me. So I can't really take out any scenes because I feel like it would honestly take away from the movie for me personally. Yeah, no, I would have to, uh, I would have to agree. I think the movie flows really well. Most of the scenes kind of feel integral to one another. There's never anything that necessarily feels like super out of place. I would agree that that scene there, um, I guess, is the one kind of like random outlier in the mix that you mentioned with uh, with Christine. It only really serves the purpose of Christine knowing that he has these abilities so that later on when they roll up with the ancient one, that it's not super weird to her and they don't, they don't have to do the reintroduction. So it still kind of serves a purpose, but I would agree. I would say probably my least favorite scene is the Dormammu scene. Obviously, like just like not even just the villain. I just think like out of all the stakes and like the fight with Kaecilius in particular, that scene with Dormammu just kind of feels like it just was kind of a, a, a workaround to get rid of Kaecilius, really. Whereas I think I would have preferred just a final real genuine showdown with Kaecilius, Mordo, Wong, and the two um, the two zealots that are there with Kaecilius. I think I would have just preferred that versus the Dormammu scene. But what about you, uh, Jacob? What's your what's your least favorite scene in the film? All right, so I've already touched upon you know, I'm not crazy about the romance. The like the villains aren't really the best. Another thing that hadn't been touched on. And this is kind of a thing in the MCU. The MCU is kind of known for their like jabs at humor, and it's kind of become worse in recent movies. But in this movie, some of the quips in this movie don't really land for me compared to in other Marvel movies. Uh, like when Doctor Strange first meets Wong for the first time, he's like, "Wong, that's just your name. You're just doing the one word thing." I'm like. I mean, he's like trying to like compare him to like other one word names. I'm like, this is not a good joke. And then they do it a second <laughs> time. He's like, try that, Beyonce. I'm like, oh, that's a bad. <laughs> I will say the joke where you hear him and you see Wong in the library listening to Beyonce and he, he's like sneaking the books. That joke, I, I got to laugh out of that. So I, I, that joke probably would not have worked if he hadn't have made that cringe Beyonce reference. But. Yeah. yeah, just some of the jokes just uh, did not work for me. Uh, that not not the not the worst instance of a movie where they've done that. I think they've done worse. They've had worse problems with that. Like Thor: Love and Thunder is a recent example. But yeah, this one, some of the jokes just didn't do it for me. Yeah, man, fair enough, dude. I mean, I, I, you kind of made me laugh with that, too. Just uh, it, it is a pretty, like, sometimes with some of these jokes, you go back and the jokes are so specific to the time or kind of like the humor just doesn't really hold up as much. One of those movies that's like just a random one here in the mix is uh, when I did my rewatch series for the X-Men, uh, which you guys both joined me on individual different fran um, movies on that when I did that. Uh, but when I did Deadpool 2, some of the humor in that movie is so specific to the time um that it came out that i that some of the jokes didn't land as much for me upon rewatch um but really quickly before we move into the final 10 minutes of this stream i uh, saw so we have a couple more comments um we got prodigious on here hopping in here saying that uh actually what do you guys think about Maz mickelson's villain honestly i think he doesn't deserve the hate he was cool and fine we've talked on him a lot uh we all kind of have the same kind of gist really well performed just didn't do much with his character cinematic pops in here saying happy friday fellas and then Prodigious also uh, comparing what we said about Dormammu and Galactus to Parallax and the Green Lantern, who was literally also just a cloud turret. Yeah, um, that movie, which is, that yeah, movie just, sucks so bad. I, just, <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen it since it came out, but I just remember there's this one scene where this helicopter is like in, like uh, it's like about to be like blown up or whatever. It's out of control, and Green Lantern turns it into a race car and puts it on a green Hot Wheels track. I was like, "What am I watching uh, right now? This is awful. It's so bad. I hate that movie so much. What a fiery passion!" Yeah, that's a 
that's definitely a, a movie. I always remember seeing that the first time in theaters and just thinking, wow, this is really bad. And I took my dad to see it because my dad's a big DC fan. And at the time, this was in the early days of us. Like we hadn't really even gotten into the, you know, the, the DC EU yet. Yeah. And um, my dad was like, oh, Green Lantern movie. Like his first question was, does, does the Flash show up? Because my dad loves the Flash. So like my dad's perspective was like every DC movie before the DC EU, like, He'd be like, the Flash should have showed up. Like he always says, I remember going to see The Dark Knight with him. And there's that scene at the end where Batman is rolling out and he's, you know, giving that speech about him kind of being like whatever the city needs him to be. And my dad's like, the Flash should have run up next to his car and they should have built a team. I was like, okay, dad. Um, (laughs) So I took him to go see Green Lantern. And I remember in the opening sequence with the lantern who who dies and whose ring goes to Hal Jordan, um, it, my dad was already asleep before that scene was over. I was like, <laughs> wow. I was like, damn, this, this movie lost him literally in the first four minutes. Um, literally, but- literally, the only enjoyment I get out of that Green Lantern movie is seeing uh, Ryan Reynolds crap on it in the Deadpool movies. Yes, right, one hundred percent. That the like part part of the Ryan Reynolds lore now is is that, and I think that yeah, at least he was able to make fun of it. Same with the kind of like X Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, where it's able to kind of like be part of like a, the fan culture now, almost in a goofy way. Now, one thing I've had a lot of fun doing these with at the very end of all these streams is the fact that, you know, now that I'm going back and covering all these movies, instead of covering them in real time, covering them now, you know, these characters have gone in a lot of different places at this point. And so, uh, Jacob, we'll start with you. Um, what are your thoughts on what they've done with Doctor Strange since this? You know, a lot of times when you review a movie, you don't really know where it's going to go just yet. You can have your hopes and dreams. But Doctor Strange has now appeared in his own sequel, as well as two Avengers films. And the post credit scene of this film, the first one, uh, obviously showcases his brief appearance in Thor Ragnarok. So what are your thoughts on what they've done with Doctor Strange uh, after this? Yeah, I have greatly enjoyed what they've done with Doctor Strange since his first movie. I think the more I've seen Benedict Cumberbatch in the role, the more he, I think, really excels in the character. The more he, I think, lets loose with the character. I think when you... I think when you get past, you know, the origin where he's very arrogant, he's entitled, and he's pretty insufferable in the first movie. And then once you see him, you have a purpose as Doctor Strange. He is this awesome character. Uh, He has some great moments, uh, like in Infinity War. There's some cool action stuff with him where he's trying to fight Thanos. Uh, I love, I even loved his appearance in uh, Spider Man No Way Home, Uh, like him trying to be almost kind of a mentor for Spider-Man and then that kind of backfires. There's this cool fight that both of them have in the mirror dimension, which is pretty awesome. And then I love multiverse of madness. And then you know, his episode of what if, where we see like an alternate version where he loses his heart instead of his hands. Cause in that universe, Christine dies and you get to see like a, an even worse version of the character and how just that pain and grief, and his obsession for power just destroys him. And it's such a heartbreaking episode to see. And watching that episode, which that season one episode is still my favorite episode in all of that awesome animated show. It's like, yeah, you go back and watch the first Doctor Strange and get the what if episode in context. It's like, okay, this version of Doctor Strange that in the timeline we have, the mainline timeline was the best option for the character, how we got him from how he started out his beginnings to where he is now. I'm like, yeah, the main timeline has it right on Dr. Strange. It's a, he's a cool character. Nice, man. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear kind of like where you've really enjoyed him. And those are all great things. I didn't mention no way home, but yeah, another great like element of him is in this franchise is, is his role in, in no way home. Uh, Rob, what about you? Uh, wh- wh- how do you feel about Benedict Cumberbatch and Dr. Strange as he's progressed through these films? I think, <clears throat> excuse me. I think he's uh, done a great job throughout this film. I think he's been done very well as well with all the movies he's been in and his cameos. His cameos are almost like perfect too, especially Thor Ragnarok. It was so great, you know, with uh, Tom Hiddleston and Loki and saying, "I've been falling for thirty minutes." You know, like <laughs> the dynamic between the three of them in Ragnarok was like, I don't like to say perfect, but it it was perfect in my opinion. Like those three actors, are amazing. They're amazing actors on their own. So the three of them, and then like the humor as well was perfect in, in Ragnarok. 
and then in No Way Home, him and Tom, uh, and Tom Holland had great chemistry too, you know? So the, the way how he was in, in No Way Home was great. And he did good in, in, in Multiverse of Madness as well. I just wish the elements were better. But I love the way how he's been done, man, in the MCU. He, I would say he is one of the uh, characters that in the MCU has, been, has had uh, consistency, like good consistency, not like Thor, unfortunately, which... You know, we can talk about that another time. But yeah, no, Doctor Strange has had a good consistency across the board. They're easily one of my uh, favorite like MC live action MCU characters to date. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I definitely agree. I think that for the most part, they've done incredible stuff with his character. He's always had something pivotal to do, um, and you know, he was in like insanely important in the events in Infinity War and Endgame. Like, I, I love how integral they made him to the story and as far as like their odds and their chances of winning against Thanos that that last scene with Tony Stark when Tony Stark of course sacrifices himself where he gives him the you know the 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 one finger like I, th I thought it was great so brilliant I thought that Benedict played it so so well he plays the character so well and anytime I see the character in older stuff now or any like animated stuff in the past like he just evokes who Doctor Strange has kind of always been in various iterations and uh yeah i honestly don't think they could have casted better now I'll, I'll wrap this up really quickly before we go ahead and get you guys your little sections where you guys can plug some things is there anybody in this film that you think would have been played by a different actor or should have been played by a different actor and could have been better mm, ooh, i can't really question. imagine like i think the christine character i think because of the way she's written in this movie, I think any other actress could have played her, and it probably would have been the same thing because she's that disposable here. Again, not a knock against Rachel McAdams. It's just the way the character's written. And everybody else, I would say, I can't imagine any other actor playing these characters. Yeah, no, yeah. I, can't, I, I honestly, no. She would tell Edgy for nobody. Nope, you got nope. <laughs> nobody else. Uh, strange, nope. Ancient one, no. Yeah, no. Honestly, I mean Rachel, and even then Rachel McAdams. I could, I love Rachel McAdams, so I could stomach it. But even then, if we had to choose, yeah, probably the Christine character. But even then, as Jacob said, you could take her out, put somebody else in, and it would be the exact same thing. So, yeah, no. There's nobody. I don't think anybody else. Because if somebody else was, let's say, um, I I forget that guy's name. He's an Asian actor. Uh, he was in Rush Hour 3 as Jackie Chan's brother. He was Kenshi in that movie. Um, right. if, I know the actor you're talking about. You know what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about? He's always in like a Ronin, a, 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 um, a Scorpion in, in Mortal Kombat. Um, right. He, like I was thinking earlier when we were talking about the ancient one, he would have been like visually, like aesthetically, probably one of the most perfect people for the ancient one. But it would have been different. The whole movie would have been different if he was the ancient one. So... For this movie and the tone and the vibe and everything, everybody fits. Yeah, no, I think I agree for sure. I think if there was somebody, maybe Christine on a writing level, because for the most part, I do think that the, that's a character that's definitely, you know, that didn't really have an abundance to do. And uh, but Rachel McAdams plays it well. But I do agree with what you guys are saying. And honestly, this has been a blast to do, guys. Thank you so much for joining me, both Jacob and Robbie. As usual, guys, you guys can find the links to any of my guests down below in the description box. You guys can find the link to Jacob's channel down below as well as Rob's channel. And Rob has actually had a lot of blow up recently in terms of monetization over on his Facebook page. So I left the link to that down below so you guys can go give him some love. Um, and uh, yeah, Jacob, I'll start with you. I know you're kind of in a different period of your life right now. You've talked about that on your channel. You're doing things a little bit differently with your channel, but what can people expect from your channel? Maybe anything you want to plug moving yeah. forward? Yeah, it's fascinating because uh, you know, I started out on YouTube as the big movie guy. I don't do much of that anymore. Uh, I do occasionally do some, um, more so live streams. Like I've turned celebrating Disney into a live stream show where it's like, I think once a month I review like five movies and then I re upload them as standalone videos. Uh, I, I've, I've been doing the discussing DreamWorks show with Ryan can, uh, just started a new series with you know, Henry Mockingbird. He was on the chat today. Uh, we've been going, we're going through the filmography of, Don Bluth, the guy behind movies like The Secret of Nib, American Tale, The Land Before Time, Anastasia. Just great movies. Uh, this past right. Wednesday, we looked at the first major film he was involved in, which was Pete's Dragon, the 1970s film. 
and, and then also I've made a shift more and uh, doing more discussions on music. I've been doing projects with different other music based YouTubers, uh, some of which are on their channel, some of which are on mine. Uh, currently on my channel, uh, I'm going through the, the discographies of the Beatles, Korean's Clearwater Revival, and what, I just started one on Elton John. So uh, we're going through all those artists' albums, and then we'll do like a big ranking at the end. And it's been a lot of fun. And then I'll be, and then I'll guest on other people's channels, like my buddy Nick. Uh, the channel's called Townsend Five Hundred Five. I'm currently on his channel for a series on uh, the Rolling Stones. And also Johnny Cash. And then my friend Scott has a channel called Scrap Dog Scott. And I'm currently on his channel covering Genesis. And then nice. my buddy Scott has a group channel called uh, Sound Lab Studios. And we just finished covering Led Zeppelin over on that channel where it's like the big group channel. That's awesome, man. That's cool, dude. Yeah, no, I've seen you doing so much music content now, which I love. I've always wanted to add more music content and reviews like that here to my channel as well. And uh, seeing you do it, it definitely inspires me to to try to dip my toes in it. But uh, yeah, man, it's so good to have you on, genuinely. I know it had been quite some time since I had you on last. But for anybody who's interested, I've had Jacob on dozens of times. You guys can find videos um, for other live streams as well as movies we've covered, like Disney Channel original movies, uh, as well as some more serious movies, comedies like Yes Man with Jim Carrey. We've covered a bunch here together on the channel, and there's some yeah. stuff over on his channel that we've done together as well, like the Shrek films yeah. and some others. So definitely um, yeah, the don't get this channel. The high school movies was one of the highlights. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, dude. We, we, we've talked on so much, uh, just so, so much good stuff that we've done together. Uh, and Rob, uh, what about you, man? Anything that you want to plug over on your channel? Things for people to expect? Any of that? Yeah, so I uh, recently did a um, story time video, and uh, what I've been working on is these best of moments from some of my favorite animated stuff. And I'm going to start with the beloved Young Justice show because fans are still calling for a season five, and we deserve a season five, and we will get that season five, even if it comes 20 years later. So, yeah. Working on the best stuff of that, and then um, some more story time uh, videos. And uh, actually, I'm try I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm not gonna say what it is just yet because I wanna finalize that whole um, process behind it. But I'm gonna start doing things a little bit different in videos because just trying to spice it up, do some different things. So definitely wanna retain people and then get some new people and just branching out. Um, I've collabed with uh, different people now, and it's just like getting some ideas from them. So, uh, and equally giving them ideas. So it's like, okay, so just expect some different things, like content wise and edit wise and everything. Nice, man. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Genuinely, everybody who watched, whether you're watching this live, you've chimed in here and there, or you're watching this after the fact, whatever the case may be. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And a big thanks once again to Jacob and Robbie for joining me on today's episode of reviewing older movies. I don't really have a name for the show yet, but for this stream, it was a lot of fun to do genuinely. Again, you guys can find the links to their channels down below. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for chiming in. See you guys. Thanks for having us.